MD of Hindalka Industries. Mr. Pai, good morning. Now, the sequential improvement in business is pretty visible. Let's start with the aluminium business in India. Uh, you know, we've seen improvement in the auto segment as well as other segments here at back home. So how has demand and pricing really shaped up? So uh, the demand, uh, we, we sort of, for the quarter, the average demand has come back about 75, 80%. But the interesting thing is in September, it's at 90%. And in October, we are now seeing 100% pre-COVID levels. So the demand in India, in all sectors, has come back quite strongly. And of course, the price of aluminium has also steadily gone up. So, you know, in Q2, the average was about 1,704. But from September, October, now November, the LME is more between the 18 and 1900s. So as demand is picking up, not just in India, worldwide, the aluminium prices are firming up. Do you see any inventory pressure, um, you know, that may pause uh, the rise in the aluminium prices? That's a good question because the, the inventories are at a higher level. I mean, you, today you have around 14 million tons of aluminium in inventories around the world. But I think that, you know, the supply and demand situation is tightening up. And as the demand picks up and the general economy grows, the optimism is growing. And I think that's what's fueling the rise in the LME. Mr. Pai, the end of October in particular saw a significant price increase and we understand that you hiked prices of your ingots as well by nearly 7 to 8 percent in October. Will your uh, EBITDA performance improve further for aluminium now? If the LME continues at this level, absolutely. The Q3 EBITDA and the Q4 EBITDA will improve. And do you think that the higher input costs then could be a bit of a dampener for your performance going forward? No, it's a good question. I think that in Q3, we are expecting the input costs to be at the best a percent higher than Q2. But I think from Q4, you, we will start to see some cost inflation because coal prices are going up, uh, furnace oil, uh, CP coke pitch prices have started to go up as you know, the demand has risen in most parts of the world. So I think the cost inflation will start to creep in in Q4. But if the LME stays at these levels, I think the, the EBITDA performance will still be much better. Copper, though, has recovered very smartly, but is still not near the pre-COVID levels. What's the plan to scale up production and the copper EBITDA, which is still dis declining? What's the plan to salvage the situation there? Yeah, it's true. It, it has, as you said, it has uh, Q2 to Q1, it has improved to 208, but it's not at the levels it should be. And I think that's because we have had a shutdown in Smelter 3 uh, for the whole month of September. And I think in Q4, we will have a shutdown on uh, smelter one for the whole month of uh, October. So I think that um, the copper business will probably come back into its uh, normal run rate by Q4 of this year. Okay. Also wanted to understand about Novellas because uh, that's increased the EBITDA per ton guidance. Is it only on account of Alaris's uh, product mix and contribution to margins? I think that the underlying EBITDA per ton of Novellis is at the 490 levels. The interesting thing is Alaris is also accretive. So most people did not uh, realize that, but the acquisition of Alaris is also uh, accretive to the EBITDA per ton. So I think Q2 was $493 per ton, and now Novellis is confident enough to guide that going forward, they'll be, you know, they have shown a path from the current 3.8, 3.9 to 4.5 million tons and a guidance that the, on a sustainable basis, the EBITDA is going to be between 480 to $500 a tonne.